welcome into the studios today, Bobby Jones with the Lawrence Baptist Association. Welcome to you, Bobby. Well, thank you. And right off the bat, thank you so much for, for your initiative, for what you do, for your leadership throughout the Lawrence Baptist Association. Uh, you, you must not sleep very much, Bobby. I, I stay pretty busy. <laughs> yes, you do. yes, yes. And, and so, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of <clears throat> summer. It's hard to believe that we, I know. we're coming to the end of, of summer for 2018. Time does fly. It's been a mm. hot summer. It's been rainy here, but you've been traveling all over mm -hmm. and, and sent out missions through the Lawrence Baptist Association uh, right. to many places over the summer. So, ladies and gentlemen, we thought we'd get together and, and just remind you what uh, our town, what our county, what our Lawrence Baptist Association has done over the summer. Because uh, anytime you get through with a, a project, so to speak, you should look at that project, mm -hmm. evaluate it, and, and then go forward. But you have to look back at it and, and take note. And there's so many people, uh, good Baptist people, no doubt, that, that mm -hmm. believe in missions. A Baptist church believes in missions, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's just part of the very essence of right. the fiber of the church is, is going and doing missions, and we've had some great stories on. Uh, we had um, uh, the initiative of young people through uh, Pine Forest mm -hmm. and First Baptist that mm -hmm. had the youth that came in and stayed and, and worked right. locally with, with some projects. Wasn't that a heartwarming story? Yeah, we had some of our churches that was involved in that. Yeah. And, and so that, that right here in our community will continue to grow. But the Lawrence Baptist Association has been to states throughout the area, throughout the United States, mm -hmm. and abroad. Why mm -hmm. don't we start with, uh, if you can rewind back, and, and let's just kind of take an account on, on some of those from the very beginning of the summer. Um, the, the first trip we did this year was during spring break. Um, and uh, we had a team that went to Bland, Virginia. Um, we've been going there for about mm, almost, if not almost 10 years, and uh, we usually have at least two trips uh, to that particular area of Virginia every year. And, uh, in fact, we've got a team up there right now as we speak. We have a team up there working. Um, Bland is in the Appalachians, and uh, it has some very impoverished areas. And um, so uh, we had a team, uh, probably uh, mostly young people with some adults that was with them. And they went up and they, they worked on homes. They uh, did construction projects. They worked in their ministry center. Uh, they went out into the neighborhood and did evangelism. Um, they did a lot of different things that, that week while they were up there. Um, and it, it's just heartwarming. I, in fact, I got a text from Dee Dee Hoosier, which runs that whole area that we uh, work with, and uh, she sent me a text just the other day to, to, to say once again, you know, I appreciate the Lawrence Baptist Association. She always holds at least two weeks open for us every year because she said out of all of the, the teams that come and help us, we love y'all and we appreciate y'all and y'all do a tremendous job for us, and so we really do appreciate that. And so it's good to, to know that when you have teams going up there that they do what they're supposed to and they, they really have the right focus and, uh, and their heart is to, to, to minister and to share the gospel and to, to help people. And so I, that's really heartwarming and to have her to send that text. And she's told me that over and over again, but to send that text this time, it meant a lot to me to, to see that that team is really appreciated in what they're doing How up do there. you prep them, Bobby? How do you prep them to go if it's a, a newer group or do you prep them every time no matter if you got new or experience? Um, mostly we do try to have a meeting prior to going. Um, not always if I have some older experienced people. When I say older, I meant people that has gone sure. numerous times. Um, we don't always have meetings with them because they, they kind of know the ropes. Mm -hmm. But uh, especially if we have a, a team with some new people, we always do have meetings. Um, and, and we talk about, you know, the whole point of this mission trip. It is not a vacation. A lot of people talk about, you know, kiddingly, they talk about all the, the vacations that we go on. But it is not a vacation. I mean, it is hard work. It really is. And uh, you don't have the best conditions, usually, uh, that you're staying in and everything else. Um, 
and and so we help them to understand what the whole purpose is. Um, I also, when when I plan mission trips, I try to I plan I try to plan those mission trips where they stay really busy because if you're going to give your time, your effort, your money, yes. your resources, and everything else, then you want to have an experience and uh, have an opportunity for God to use you that whole week. And so <clears throat> we talk about, you know, on uh, making sure that you are flexible, making sure that that even if you go up there with a mindset of what you're going to accomplish, it may change in two seconds. And, you know, you may have to go in a whole new direction. Mm -hmm. Be willing to do that. Yeah. Uh, keep your heart focused on why you're there. Make sure that you're there to minister to those people. As I tell people all the time when we go, into places we're here to serve you we're not here for us we're here for you we're here to serve you and so you tell us what you need and then we will do our best to try to accommodate that and and help you in any way that we possibly can and that, that's our heart and I try to portray that to the teams when they when uh, our teams go out and so I've been really pleased I really have not had any bad experiences or, or reports from teams going out Usually we have really good, and they want us to come back over and over again. And and usually um, we continue to go. If we find a place that we feel like God wants us to go in, then we continue to go there over and over again. Some places we've been in for at least 10 years. I've been here 11 years this year, and we've been in some of those places at least 10 years well, on a road. Congratulations. You know how to work with people, Bobby, very well. Anybody that's been in a position for 11 years, and you deal with so many different facets, so many different mm -hmm. churches, so many different leaders. Uh, but after spring break, you came back, caught your breath, and then summertime was here. And what was that first mission for the summer? After, we, after that trip, the next trip was to the Philippines. I was there for, for two weeks. That was a, a, a kind of a difficult trip this time because I just had foot surgery. And um, the doctor had, had not really wanted me to go on this trip, but I had a team that I knew um, needed me to go on that trip. And so one of the people on the trip was a physical therapist. And so uh, that was good. He could work with my foot while, while I was over there. But I was over there for two weeks. We have a church plant that is over there, Shady Grove. Uh, Baptist Mission Church, and it's been planted for about 10 years over there. Um, the neat thing about that, when I went this year, um, some of the, the kids that were in that church when we first planted that church about 10 years ago um, are now grown, and they are in the 11th and 12th grades and in school, and they um, feel a call into ministry. And so... On the, the church plant is on Commodus Island. The next island over that we land in when we come is in Cebu. And the seminary is a Baptist seminary there. And so they want to go to to seminary. Well, that means that they have to go over and stay uh, on Cebu Island. And uh, the, the whole cost of that um, for them to go stay in the seminary and for their food and their housing and everything is about $750 a year, which is a lot of money for them. And so the Lawrence Baptist Association is paying that. As long as they keep up their grades, as long as they do what they're supposed to do, then we pay their tuition. And what a, what a great way for us to get more gospel ministers out into uh, the Philippines. And so we're really excited about that. But that's just amazing to see how they've been really faithful in the church for these 10 years. They've, they've attended, they've, they've worked well, they've, you know, they've done, you know, they've grown and matured in their walk and with Christ. And it's just exciting to see God calling them in ministry now. But we went there and stayed for two weeks. We worked with the church. We did a VBS there. Uh, we did a, a lot of ministry in the, in the community as well and did a lot of, you know, uh, sharing the gospel, and um, it's just exciting to see what God is doing there. In the church plant, we have a, a church planner. His name is Ronnie, and um, he's recently gotten married in the last couple of years, and he and his wife work tremendously together. Uh, they are doing a tremendous job reaching that, that whole community with the gospel. The church is growing, um, and it's just exciting to see uh, that church plant that was planted about 10 years ago and all the people and all the lives that it's touched. Um, but that's a, that's a difficult trip. 
Um, it's, it's about um, a 16-hour flight into um, Seoul, South Korea, is where we usually go to. So we have gone into Japan or, or Thailand, but usually at Seoul, South Korea. And then you have a layover, and then you have about a, a three or four-hour flight into to Cebu. Um, and then you have to get on the back of a, a, a truck or something and ride to the dock. And then you get on a boat with um, animals and, and, and food supplies and, and everything else uh, for about three, uh, three hours. And then you get off on Komodos Island. Then you get on the back of another truck and you ride for about 45 minutes till you get to the church plant. You gotta so, wanna go there. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wanna go there. You know, but, but a couple of years back, we had a, a lady in her 80s uh, that went, and I, I tried to talk her out of that because I, n not that I didn't want her to go, but I was a little bit afraid because I knew that was a tough trip. Yeah. But she did well. She enjoyed it. In fact, she was wanting to go back um, the next year, and then she had already paid and, and planned to go, and uh, right before our trip, she passed away. But uh, she loved it. She said, all my life I wanted to go on a mission trip. And I thought, and you had to pick this one to go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, she chose one, and she chose a tough one, you know. She, but, but, Bobby, how wonderful. And the seed was planted 10 or so years ago, and then those young people who were uh, led to Christ, who, who accepted Christ into their heart, and, and then grow up and want to share that, want to mm -hmm. share that love and that passion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we do in the Lawrence Baptist Association. That's where the mission tithes go. That's mm -hmm. where your support goes and, and your effort of so many people goes. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to mention as well, um, for the, the children in the, the school system there, they have to, to pay to go. Um, and that you know, buys their resources and also their uniforms mm -hmm. uh, because they have to wear a uniform to, to go to school. And it's about $60 a, a year. So the Lawrence Baptist Association is, on, at least for those that are involved in our church plan over there, pay, paying for that. And uh, we're going to be sending out um, an email so that I anybody who wants to help support some of those kids to make sure that they are able to go to school because if they don't pay, the, I mean, it, they can't go to school. Mm -hmm. and, and so that $60, which is not much to us, can mean whether or not a kid can go to school that year. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll be sending that out pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you can help with that. That's $60, but even if you could do more and try mm -hmm. to help and sponsor a one in seminary for seven fifty, you right. think about, you know, seven fifty is a lot of money now. Mm -hmm. It is, but for them to go to school, go to college, go to seminary college for a year for mm -hmm. seven fifty, and you know, as you said, you related it's an astronomical amount mm -hmm. of money for them. But that's exactly right. Not They'd so never be able to afford and, that. And not the cause that that it's going toward and the souls yeah. that it can save. Yeah, because there's a lot of women there that uh, their job is because they still plow the fields with oxen and plows, and uh, they have corn fields and different things. But uh, a lot of the women, their job is to go out and pull weeds out of that corn every day, and, and they make enough to just buy a little bit of food for their family for supper that night. Um, so that's the life that they have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've been through a couple of events, and, and we want to go through so many more, but we'll take a short break and be back. We're here with Bobby Jones. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Helen Powell. I've been serving the Middle Georgia area since 1985. If you would love an exciting career, please call me. Careers in Cosmetology, 129 North Franklin Street, 272-1967. Hi, I'm Ashley. I'm an upcoming graduate from Careers in Cosmetology. It's been a wonderful experience, and I encourage you to contact Ms. Helen Powell for more opportunities. Hello, I'm Christy at Careers of Cosmetology. I've recently enrolled here and I'm excited about the opportunities that lie ahead. Hey, my name is Daphne Jackson. I'm excited to be enrolled in Careers in Cosmetology. If you would like this opportunity, contact Careers in Cosmetology. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I've been enrolled in Careers in Cosmetology for about four months now. I'm really enjoying it and I think if this is the career for you, you should definitely come see Miss Helen Powell. Careers in Cosmetology, 129 North Franklin Street, our number is 272-1967. Give me a call. 
Portions of this program are brought to you by Fairview Park Hospital, a leader in healthcare for Dublin Lawrence and surrounding communities, providing specialty services through facilities such as our Sleep Center, Heart Center, and Women's Imaging Center. Welcome you back again. We're here with Bobby Jones. Always a joy to have you, Bobby, and, and for you to be able to share uh, and tell the stories that you tell because you never know who it may touch in the community that, that may see the difference that uh, Christians make in their walk and in their mission uh, to spread the good news throughout the world and, and here in the USA. But we went to Virginia. Uh, we, we've taken into account of the Philippines and, and you made it back safely from there. And, and so uh, what was the next? Yeah, the next trip was um, to uh, one of our teams went to the Navajo um, Indian Reservation in New Mexico. And we've been going there for about 10 years. And it's amazing to see what God has done there um, with those people uh, on the reservation. Um, when we first went, uh, there was a church planner and a, a church there on the reservation that we were working with. And um, it, was, it was almost like they were, what are you going to do for us? And my answer was nothing. I'm here to walk side of you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to support you, but not to come and do for you. And and so uh, it has been amazing in those 10 years to see how that group of people in that church has advanced and how that spread out through the reservation. Um, in fact, you know, they are now actively doing missions. That church plan is actively doing missions themselves throughout the reservation mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, they went on a mission trip with us to the Sioux Indian Reservation in South Dakota, the first mission trip ever in their life. And I, the, the Sioux Indians and the Navajos in history past was staunch enemies. And that was a major deal for them to come together and do a mission trip there. Um, but that was, that was an awesome thing. Um, but we have seen how God has just opened many doors. We've gone out because there is a, a, a major suicide epidemic there on the, the reservation, especially with um, adult males and young, uh, young teenagers. And so we've done suicide prevention classes. Um, we've done all kind of training. I've gotten to meet the president and vice president of the reservation. In fact, I know them, have a relationship with them. Um, now, you have to understand most of the people on the reservation still had traditional views. Uh, the traditional religion, view, religious views. Um, but uh, little bit by little bit, we've seen more and more people accepting the gospel. Um, and the trip in, the first trip to uh, the Navajo Reservation this year, uh, we had been working with this new area, it's called Mariana Lake. And uh, we'd been working with them trying to get some inroads in there. And so they continued to do that work for us while they were working in other areas that we'd already been in. And so when we went in July, we did a major um, sports, uh, not sports camp, but VBS camp at, um, on, at Elam Haven, where we always do, and had about 100 kids. But then we also, in the afternoon, was able to go and do a VBS over at Mariana Lake because they had opened the doors for us to come over there. Well, lo and behold, I did not know that God was going to open up more doors for us, and we had invitations for other places. They wanted us to come and share the gospel and, and do VBS. And, all. and I had to turn you know, some of those places down because I didn't have enough people nor I have enough time to do all of that. And so ho we're hoping and we're planning to try to go back uh, this next year to even more of those places and, and do VBS and share the gospel. One of the interesting things is one of the areas that we had an invitation to go to was uh, in Arizona. Now, the Navajo Indian Reservation is a large area, so it covers the four corners of four states, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, and uh, New Mexico. And the, the place that they wanted us to go was right at the beginning of the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And it's a canyon, and the only way that you can get to where they live is by horseback or by riding, I mean walking down the canyon or by helicopter. And the river kind of runs through, and um, it's a beautiful setting down there. Um, and so once you get down there, 
you stay for the whole duration of your trip. You don't come up and down because the mail is delivered every morning by mule um, and their supplies are delivered by horseback every day um, for the, the whole group that lives down there. Um, and so we would, we would have to go down there and camp out in tents near the river or there is a building we can stay in and sleep in sleeping bags or, or blow up mattresses or whatever. And so we're looking at that next year, but to me that would be an awesome trip and an awesome opportunity. Uh, but you'd have to have some younger people to go to yeah. that yeah. trip. And needless uh, to say, Bob, you don't get very good reception down at a That's wide, exactly wide right. Not, <laughs> not quite making it, is it? You're, sounds like you're almost mm. pumping in sunshine. It's That's exactly beautiful, right. beautiful, huh? Yeah, yeah, it really is. But and So you have that opportunity to share with such a large group, and, and you see by, by your efforts, by your your sincere and diligent efforts it just seems to be growing and that's exactly and the Lord right. opens another door and another door people are thirsty for the word that's exactly right you know there there seems to be a hopelessness there uh, um they they are living in in most part in poverty and um you know there's not many houses that have running water nor electricity yeah. uh, they live a lot of them live in what they call hogans which is you know, little um, octagon-shaped houses that um, it's one room, uh, not much bigger, well, not even as big as this room right here, and the whole family lives in there. Um, and uh, so it, it's, uh, it's a situation where a lot of them just feel trapped and, and hopeless. And uh, there again, we are working with some of the younger people there, uh, trying to get them on into um, schools, colleges, and different things of that nature. Um, there was one guy that uh, I, had, I had to write a letter of recommendation for to get him into a military school, and it has made the world of difference in his life. And I, I saw him when I was out there this summer. He was home for the summer, and I, I'm just amazed at the maturity and growth I've seen in him and just the difference uh, that that school has made in his life. And so we're just trying to, sometimes you do just one at a time, you know, just, you know, you see what God opens up and you, you go through that door. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing to see how God has worked in many, many lives out there. Yeah, we're visiting with Bobby Jones again. We talking about the mission trips, the efforts of Lawrence Baptist Association and the leadership as a director of, of LBA, uh, 10, 11 years. Thank you mm -hmm. so much again. We'll take a short break. We're going to be right back, and you'll love the next story, I'm sure, as I will. So stay tuned, all right? Hi, I'm Jeff Cannon, President of Citizens Bank of Lawrence County. If you're presently a customer of ours, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing us to be your bank. We appreciate the confidence you have placed in us and enjoy providing you with the most up-to-date banking products and services to satisfy your needs. If you're not a current customer, we would like to invite you to stop by and let us show you true community banking at its best. We concentrate on our local community, doing our part to make Dublin and Lawrence County a better place to live, work, play, and retire. We recently introduced two new products, eStatements and Access Now, our mobile banking app. Both of these products will help to make banking with us more convenient and will also help to provide you with a safer and more secure banking experience. So for all your banking needs, just give us a call or stop by and let us show you personal banking at its best. Citizens Bank of Lawrence County, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Allen's Heating and Air is your licensed Amana equipment dealer. Trust Allen's Heating and Air to install and service your heating and air conditioning unit. Allen's services all brands. With the purchase of a new Amana unit, you get a lifetime warranty on the compressor. Allen's Heating and Air. Call Sean Clark or any of his friendly staff at Allen's Heating and Air. Amana Heating and Air Conditioners. Lasts and lasts and lasts. All right, we're back with you again and just able to share exciting stories and to think about it. We take so much for granted. You know, we get up and, and uh, we get to go to church on Sunday. It's air conditioned. We get to hear a good word and we get to tithe and we get to be a part of missions and sometimes we get to go and uh, and serve in some ways. Uh, members from our church may be called to be missionaries and go to a foreign land or uh, plant a church in a, another area. There's so many ways that we can be a part if only just to, to give that to missions mm -hmm. uh, as our church. And I say only, that's 
you know, without uh, the means, you can't go anywhere. You right. can't do anything. You can't help one, and then you can't help uh, those people change their mm -hmm. their life there. And, and uh, but but in going forward with you, Bobby, um, what are some other great experiences? Some other trips that just really stand out. Well, let me go back to the 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 uh, Navajo. We had uh, a couple of teams that went out and. Uh, the one that we went in July, we were able to, to go in some new areas. And um, Bobby Hutcho, the pastor uh, of Marie, was one of the guys that was on the, the trip with me on, in July. And uh, we had um, the last day of our, our VBS there at Mariana Lake. Um, we had a, a day. We always bring the, as many of the parents in as we can get there and we feed them and we share the gospel and we do all that kind of stuff and so um there was this little boy he was about four years old um and uh, had a long ponytail and uh, and so he was just wild he was running all over the place and it took everything that me and bobby could do to keep up with him and try to keep him you know where he's supposed to be and all that kind of stuff and I, i'm thinking this whole time the parents are why right here because their 12-year-old daughter had come to VBS, and so they had come with their four-year-old for that that family thing. And so I'm thinking, why don't they do something with this kid? I mean, you know, and I was really set back when I found out that uh, the the mother was totally blind uh. and the father was almost blind. What had happened, they lived near the uranium mines for a while, and um, she had a tumor behind her eyes and they did surgery. She had an allergic reaction to some, some things that they used, so they had to do surgery again, mm -hmm. and anyway, it left her totally blind in both eyes, and then he had a tumor on the brain, and so they had to do surgery, and it um, left him blind in one eye and partially blind in the other, mm -hmm. and so for them, they couldn't keep up with the four years. They said a lot of times when they go somewhere or go to the store, they have to get people to help keep up with him because yeah. they, they just can't keep up with him. And he is a live wire, <laughs> just as fun as he can be. Um, he really is. He had run around the building, and, and Bobby came around one side, and I came around oh. the other. And then he uh, reached down and picked up a rock and, and threw it and took off running, laughing, you know. And so, it, it, but what the story behind that, for let me tell it as fast as I can, um, I got to talking with them, and I found out that they are having to live with um, their in-laws right now, or his in-laws right now. They had a house, and, and uh, it was really in bad need of repair. It was about to fall down. And somebody gave them an old single-wide trailer, and he had started work on that. In fact, he had done some of the work himself. And then, then that's when he had the surgery and he was not able to finish it. So um, they had to move in with the in-law. And um, so I went over there, me and the, the church planner went over there to look to see if there's something that we could do to help finish that up. And I'm telling you, as I looked at that, behind them was the most beautiful mountain and scenery. And in front of them was a beautiful rolling valley with mountains down that side. I met, it was beautiful, and God really spoke to my heart at that time, and he was like, we don't appreciate these, because here they've got a view that people would pay lots of money for, and they can't even see it. Oh, Lord. You know, but anyway, we, we're trying to get a team of construction people and plumbers and different people um, out, back out there in September, the end of September, to finish that, that house for them so they can move back in. Uh, so we need a, a three-day turnaround, uh, about you know, six, seven, eight people that know what they're doing yeah. and can help us go back out and finish Do that Do you house. have that good team? Do you need, you know, because you mentioned we I, need younger. We need yeah. a, a younger carpenter. We need someone who knows how to plumb. What, yeah. what is it? that? Yeah, we need somebody that can help because what he's doing is he's building a roof over the trailer um, and he's putting a shingle roof on it. And uh, he's got that about three-fourths finished. So I need somebody to help finish that. That's work on the inside, carpentry work on the inside, and some plumbing. They really didn't want to do the plumbing because most of them don't have running water anyway. But I'd like to go ahead and try to get plumbing and water in there since they are, are blind and partially blind. They need water in their house. And so 
I, I'd like to try to get that for them as well. Um, and so uh, we're trying to put the team together. Kenny Rowland over at Dayspring is helping, excuse me, helping me put that team together. And uh, he's got some people that's already signed on, and I'm, I'm trying to get a couple more and get a date and go out there and, and do that and get things turned around for them. Um, but I, yeah, there's just story after story yeah. that and, you can tell. And um, you're so passionate about it, Bobby. Thank you. It wouldn't be successful if you weren't, of course, uh, but, but you're also dedicated. You know, a lot of us can be passionate about things, but you have to, to make that initiative. You have to decide you're going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. and, and through your leadership over the last 10, 11 years, everyone knows that the uh, Lawrence Baptist Association has done so much more. It's really sought out and, and built. And the stories, the, the the accounts that you've given us, Bobby, you say, and we've been going there for about 10 years, and we've been going there for about 10 years. That speaks volumes. You don't just mm -hmm. start something and that's the end of it. You keep building and keep building because it takes that, it sounds That's exactly like. right. Yeah. You have to build relationships with people for them to trust you. And how in the world are they ever going to listen to you if you just go out there and then they don't ever see you again? You know, it's got to be long term. Wherever we go, it's got to be long term. Yeah. Um, it's not about vacations. It's not about how many places can you go to and see. Yeah. But it's how many lives can you touch and change. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been a tremendous summer for you. It's been very rewarding, yeah. hasn't it, Bob? Yeah, we have uh, been to. Um, Clintwood and Tremel, Virginia, we delivered about 900 uh, backpacks up there and passed those out to kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and that came from our churches. Mm -hmm. Every bit of that came from our churches. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, passed out those backpacks to kids that were in need that couldn't afford. And it just blesses your heart to see families come and, and to see the situation they're in, but how thankful they are for that. We uh, have been doing some work. Bruton Baptist has been very uh, supportive of that, along with several other churches in our association of, of working with, with Trammell Baptist Church and trying to get um, it. It's the only church in that neighborhood, in that area, in that hollow of the mountain. And if, if, if it goes, then there's going to be no gospel witness whatsoever. And so we've been really working to build it up, and the, the church is growing. God is, there's Mike that is there now that's pastoring there and feels a passion for those people. And uh, we've just seen God come in and do some major things there. Um, Clintwood is a, an area, it's a depressed area in the Appalachians as well, but, but uh, we've seen God do some major stuff there. Um, Syracuse, where we go every year, we've had a team already up there. We've got another team going in September. Um, but we're working with a church planner up there in a very, very difficult neighborhood, and we work with drug addicts. We work with homeless people. We work with prostitutes. We work with all of those people, and uh, it, it's just amazing to see what uh, it's called the neighborhood church and to see what Ronnie is doing there uh, as a church planner, and touching those people's lives. Because you care about them, because you care about them, and again, you're going back and going mm -hmm. back, and you you're feeding into their lives, you know, it'll make a difference in those people who, you don't choose a lifestyle, I, I could only imagine, but you don't choose a lifestyle like that unless you think no one cares right. this is it, and you have to first care about them, right, Bobby? Right. I never will forget the first time we went up there, it was on, in the middle of winter, on, it was extremely cold because you have the, uh, wake, the lake, lake effect winds, and so they have snow on the ground um, almost all went alone in Syracuse and it was about zero degree weather and we were out passing out some blessing bags to some homeless people and there was a lady I have never seen somebody's skin look like that it looked like rubber it was just red and tough and 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 she was out begging for something you know and we had an encounter with her talked to her for a few minutes shared the gospel and but I, it's just amazing to see um, we ac have actually gone in and fed hundreds and hundreds of homeless people a meal and just to see how grateful they are. And I mean, only by God's grace am I not there. Amen. That's it. You're right. You know. Yeah. 
And, and when we look at it, Bobby, and people say, well, I, I just can't, I just can't give. But if those people desire just enough food to survive and we're throwing stuff out, many people would take the charge, maybe, and you could too, to skip one meal. Mm -hmm. Don't eat one meal out. Don't go, you mm -hmm. know, don't, don't eat one meal and give it if it's $10, mm -hmm. if it's 25 but you can do that for missions. Let me tell you, though, the thing that blesses my heart is when you go there and you start working with them. Our, we're, we've started a ministry uh, in Savannah now with homeless people down there because there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homeless people that live up in the bridges. Yeah. And so we have started a, a ministry down there as well. Um, but when you, see, when you give something to those individuals, um, they have nothing. But they want to make sure that their friends get something right. or they will share if they've got just a little bit, they will share. I mean, so often, I mean, God has spoken to me many times about that as I've watched how we hoard things and we pack things in our attics and have all these storage bins full of stuff and we hoard. And they have a little bit of nothing and they will share what they've got with, with other homeless people. Mm. You know, it's just, I, you, I never seem to not be amazed at how they are more giving than we are touches your heart. Hey, we're going to take another short break. Again, we're here with Bobby Jones with Lawrence Baptist Association, and we'll be right back with more, so you stay tuned. The winning team is always ready. Dolan Chevrolet! And we got a team that can't be beat. Go Team Go! Hustle on in and see what all the excitement's about. Dolan Chevrolet, the only dealer you'll ever need. Hi, I'm Perry Williamson. We've been serving the Dublin Lawrence community for over 90 years here at Williamson's Bakery. We specialize in donuts, cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies, birthday cakes. They're our business, not a hobby. And don't forget our large selection of cheese straws. For special orders, contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or better yet, just come get you some. When you stop by, be sure to try our all new Pig in the Blankets. We have bacon, sausage, and chicken. We're located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, Dublin, Georgia. With the hot, freshest donuts, come to Williamson's Bakery. We proudly support our area athletics. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm enjoying it. I trust you are uh, speaking with Bobby Jones and, and seeing what the missions are, what has uh, been going on this summer. And it's been a tremendous summer for, for missions and for people going out and serving. You mentioned uh, starting the mission in Savannah. That's mm -hmm. a newer effort. There are other newer efforts, aren't there? Yeah, and let me say, and I, I hope I can say this, and if you need to edit it out, you can do that. <laughs> but uh, but we were in, we were putting bags together, blessing bags that we carry to Savannah, mm -hmm. and there, there's always different things that that we put in there, whatever the the people down there tell us that we need to put in there. Mm -hmm. um, but we needed some some insect repellent. And uh, the no gnats that you know out of Dexter, yeah. and they know they donated a whole case of that to us and said we'll donate more if we need to. To me, that is a blessing. Um, so, because if you're living out there, up under the bridge, uh, near the water, there's gnats out there, oh, and yeah. there's mosquitoes out there, yes. and and so uh, I, I appreciate that. I yeah, really do. Could you even sleep? Yeah. You know, we sit out in the backyard and get irritated. We can go inside. They can't right. Get stuff. Yeah. That is a boy. Thank you. One of the other new places that we've started, Branton Wood, he's from my area. And uh, he started a church plant in Maine, in um, Brunswick, Maine, near Portland. And uh, we've had a team go up there. We've got another team going up in September. Um, but uh, Maine is um, a very interesting state. Um, I've, I've been up there three times so far. And the people are extremely, extremely friendly. I mean, it's like even more friendly than here. <laughs> I mean, it is unreal how nice they are. Yeah. And, and when you're there, I was amazed because I hadn't been to Maine before. I, well, I flew in to Bangor, Maine, and then went on into Canada, mm -hmm. but I, I've never really been much in Maine. So I was amazed just riding around, and, and it's like riding in Georgia. You would think you were here. Um, but the people are so friendly, but they just don't have time for the gospel. And so they're like 99 and 9 tenths lost. They just don't have time for the gospel. And so Branton is in a very difficult place uh, with a church plant, but God has blessed 
to the point that right now he has the largest evangelical church in Maine. Uh, they're running about 120, and that's amazing uh, in that area. He is doing a tremendous job, and we were up helping him a couple of weeks back, and um, we're going up in September to do a college ministry because there's a huge college there uh, about a quarter mile from his church, mm -hmm. and so we're going to try to reach those because it's a very liberal college, and so we're going to try to reach some of those college students with the gospel as well, and we've got a plan of attack on that, and so um, you know, I, I'm excited about that, but just be much in prayer on, for Branton and his family as they are doing a mighty work up there uh, in Maine. It gets really, really cold. They have huge snowstorms, um, and so it gets below zero a lot in the wintertime up there, and so it's a tough winter, but uh, he's doing a tremendous job up there. Yeah, yeah, and, and so as you watch the program, ladies and gentlemen, maybe jot down some of these. Let it lay on your heart. Remember to pray for for these mission trips that are continuously going on, for these church planters that, that are working so hard. And you think 120, and mm -hmm. it's the largest. Mm -hmm. The largest evangelical church in, in Maine. In, in Maine. That's incredible. Uh, and we think that's not many people, but for that area, oh, it's that's tremendous huge. because you yeah. said 99 and 9 tenths mm -hmm. yeah. are unsaved. Yeah. And we just don't, in the United States of America, in the Bible Belt, in the South, in Georgia, in Dublin, Lawrence County, we mm -hmm. really don't think that way. But it's a different world. Out That's there. exactly it, right. It is. And, and until you experience it, until you gain the knowledge, then you don't know. Now you know, so you're charged to pray. You're charged to do your part, to, to give to missions. How do people get in touch with you, Bobby? Um, they can go on our website, www on dot lawrencebaptist ga.com or they can call at 478-272-0361 or just stop by our office 1882 trinity hills drive yeah. all right there you go you can get in touch with bobby you know we could continue to talk all day but we want to be able to share with you uh, some of what's going on in the summer maybe the the exciting parts and the the trying parts and again how you can make a difference but we we wish you continued success. We'll pray for that, Bobby. And it's exciting to me to hear this, and I know it is for most people who watch it, uh, whether you're Baptist, Methodist, whether you're uh, Catholic, whatever you may be. If you want to get involved, you can get involved with the Lawrence Baptist Association. That's exactly right. You can right. do your part. Uh, it's, there, there are no borders. There are no walls. There's no religious uh, sect or anything right. here. Uh, Baptists just believe in mission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we're all about. Thank you for following through with that charge mm -hmm. and uh, for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back right here on TV 35. So thanks for watching.